Okay everybody, in this pro analysis lesson, we're gonna take a look at the Roth and Nadal forehand, and the question we're trying to answer specifically is what uh, role does the wrist play in the forehand? I think it's really a misunderstood thing by rec players. Uh, I think you're gonna find out that a lot of people, when you see the, the, the big pros hit, you'll see that they lay their wrist back. So this is straight, this would be 90, let's say this is 45. And the question is, how long does it stay 45? as it start to break through, so it's already changing on the way through, or is it 45 and then they hit, and then it goes away or not? So one thing I like to do, especially with Rafa, because he hits so much topspin, that's a common request of our players, is how can I learn to hit more topspin? I like to use a phrase called turning the knob. So turning the doorknob would just be me doing this. So as it relates to your forehand, it would be you hitting and then turning the knob and having this finish. It's very common with the pros that they have that kind of finish. So what I wanna have you look at is how the top edge of the racket, boom, once you turn the knob, becomes the bottom edge of the racket. We're gonna see Rafa do that. We're gonna see it in slow motion. And I want you to look at how much coiling there is and some cool things along the way. But I want you to see that basically, this wrist is not that active, bam, until the ball's gone, and then it gets kind of active and it does the, that turning of the knob. So let's go ahead and take a look at Rafa's high def uh, forehand and see what you can see. All right, everybody, here we go. We're gonna watch Rafa, and we're gonna look at those things I was mentioning, and we're gonna see that he's already up here in his high racket position. And what we're interested in highlighting here is what his wrist does, particularly on the forehand. So here he's dropping the wrist back. Uh, you can see, you know, the wrist isn't moving too much as far as flexing. But here's where things are going to start to get interesting. So right about here, you can see that the racket is still pointed back pretty much towards the back curtain. The ball's in the frame here. and But now watch how this racket tucks behind him almost towards his back. Right there, it almost disappears. So what we're showing here is a huge flexion right here in his wrist, in his forearm. That thing is pre-stretched to the max and it's going to really come whipping forward. But what I want you to notice is as he comes forward into the point of contact, a really good way to think of it, he's driving the butt cap forward. Um, this is very much an important thing to get. He's driving that butt cap forward. In other words, he's pulling the racket along. He's pulling it. Right about here, you're going to see he'll come up to this point of contact, bam, and then his follow through. And there is that windshield wiper, turn the knob sensation I was telling you about. So I'm going to go back here so you can see this. And uh, first of all, if I go back a little further, you can see how much his uh, unit turn and his kinetic link works. You can see if I just go between here and here and here and here, you can see all this coil and uncoil. And it starts with this back foot, you know, the weight's pushing off the ground. Uh, that starts his kinetic link, and there's a coiling. His legs go, his hips go, his torso, and the arms are last. So let's talk about that racket for a second. If you look at the top edge of his racket right now, I'm going to mark that right there. That's the top edge of that racket. And if you track that top edge as he goes forward, Look at what happens here. That top edge, now here comes the turning of the knob, the doorknob that is, and that top edge now becomes the bottom edge, which you can see right there. So just as so you can see it back and forth, there it is, and now it's on bottom. So you notice that he is using wrist, but it's not breaking forward, it's breaking over. And then there's this finish where he wraps it around his face, sometimes above his head. All right, so that's what I want you to learn about Rafa and the wrist. The big misconception that a lot of players make is that they think they see this position here, and then they see that one, and they assume that they're breaking their wrist in the middle of the shot. But you can see here, it happens after the shot. The shot here is gone, and now here comes the turning of the wrist. All right, so that's the takeaway, and I hope that's helpful to you. You can use it on the court.